Joining me in studio uh, right now, uh, Republican Representative uh, Matt Rinaldi uh, of Irving. And uh, Representative Rinaldi, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you uh, taking time today. Uh, the reason, One of the reasons I wanted to have you on is because you wrote a, a piece, I think it was uh, about two weeks ago maybe, for the Texas Tribune, uh, their opinion website, Trib Talk, and it was dealing with this local control issue that is has really dominated a lot of discussion, a lot of editorials out there. Uh, you've probably seen the Dallas Morning News piece about the big government Republicans <laughs> uh, coming after everybody. Uh, tell us your thoughts uh, on on why there is this liberty versus local control debate that is, has developed and why, in your mind, uh, liberty is trumping local control. Well, uh, the Dallas Morning News piece was, a, was, was an interesting piece where they said the big government Republican is the Republican that wants to reduce taxes and reduce this, the influence of government in our lives. Um, the, the, the debate's an interesting one. It, it's a, a bunch of uh, people on the left are resisting Austin's effort to reduce the scope of government in our lives, which now in Texas is coming from our local government. Uh, and what the people on the left are saying is, wait, 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 there's a principle of local control where, where people, uh, the government's closest to the people govern best. And that is a principle of governance. And it's usually a good principle of governance. However, uh, liberty always trumps local control. Um, and liberty is a more important uh, principle of governance that we need to follow. So when the two are in conflict, liberty takes precedence. What, what about the argument, and you've heard the argument, that, okay, uh, the state of Texas doesn't like it when the feds come in and tells the state what to do. Why should the local, why, why should mayors like it when the state comes in and tells the city what to do? Well, you know, I, I, I don't think it goes to the liberty trumps local control principle. I think it goes to the fact that when the feds are telling us what to do, it's not about liberty issues. They are literally trying to control us and keep us from protecting the liberty of Texans. Um, so, so it isn't the, the issue that liberty doesn't trump local control. When the feds come in and tell us that localities can't pass uh, laws banning handguns like they did in, in uh, McDonald versus Chicago recently, uh, we don't complain about that. That was a great decision. Uh, we don't think that that you know the city should be able to to infringe on First Amendment rights either. Um, th- that's that's where liberty trumps local control. In, in, in your mind, where is where's the line drawn? Because you know the the bills that are out there right now, uh, a lot of a lot of talk uh, about the oil and gas industry. Mm-hmm. You look at Denton, Texas; they banned fracking. I know that's a bill. Uh, you know that, that that's something that's being targeted. Uh, also, uh, housing vouchers here in Austin. That's something that's being targeted. Where where is the line in your mind about where to draw the line over what cities can pass when the state doesn't have necessarily a law that's, uh, I I guess, uh, an all-encompassing law? Well, I, th- I think it's when when a city infringe, infringes on on any fundamental constitutional right or or other liberty right of an individual, where th- they're able to act uh, and their actions don't affect other people. Um, there's no compelling public policy reason to limit that that conduct. Um, you know, we can have an argument over whether or not uh, the infringement on property rights that fracking bans pose, uh, you, you know, affects other people as well. Um, but that's the argument we should be having. You can't just shout local control and the argument's over. Visiting with uh, Representative uh, Matt Rinaldi here in studio. Uh, let me ask you about uh, uh, something that's not being targeted really in, in this session uh, as far as a, uh, a bill that would go against some of the ordinances that have been passed. But let's say smoking ban. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in Lubbock, we just... Uh, dealt with a, uh, a group that tried to come in, ban smoking in all public places, wanted to ban it uh, even if you're in your car if you were going through a drive through It was a pretty all-encompassing bill, and, and there was a lot of argument about, okay, private property rights versus smoking ban. state of Texas doesn't have a ban on smoking in public places. So in the future, could there be an argument made that some of these smoking bans that are in place, that that is an infringement on people's liberty? Yeah, I think an argument can be made. Um, private property owner uh, makes it clear that smoking is allowed in his establishment. People can choose to, to patronize the establishment or not. I think an argument can be made, and it's a good argument to have. I think as long as we're having it within the framework that we know that, that liberty issues do trump local control, where they're in conflict, I, I think that we're progressing, and that's a good thing. What are some of the uh, those key issues that you're going to be uh, wanting to take a look at in this legislative session? 
Um, I, you know, I think this legislative session size of government issues are always paramount. Um, I think education and parental choice is very important. And I think, uh, the most important issue to, to most people I talk to is border security and illegal immigration. And we need to do something to address it this session. You're also, uh, a co-sponsor, I believe, on a uh, truancy bill, correct? Yes, I think on a couple, um, of Representative James White's. Um, what the bills are trying to do in various degrees is to uh, essentially decriminalize truancy, um, make, making sure that, that people aren't held, uh, you know, truancy should be, uh, it can be punished, just not from criminal sanctions, mm-hmm. and it's largely between the parent and their child. Is that something where we're seeing too many kids being, you know, thrown in juvie because of being truant? Yes, I mean it, it's it's an over enforcement issue, and it's it becomes something that stays with the child for for years and years, and shouldn't be. Well, that's uh, you know some uh, interesting debates that are going to be held uh, over this. Uh, where are we as far on the House side? Uh, we, we've heard a lot, and I visited with uh, Representative Dustin Burroughs earlier about uh, the issue of tax cuts. Uh, you know that that's something that everyone wants to know about. Where we are on tax cuts seems like uh, just about everyone is in favor of getting rid of the franchise tax Mm -hmm. uh, both in the senate uh, and in the house but it seems like property taxes is one of those issues where not everyone is on board yet Uh, where are you on the on on the uh, issue of tax cuts and where do you think the house is overall right now Um, i think we're going to see some tax cuts unfortunately i haven't seen the enthusiasm in the house behind it uh, that the senate has had um, I would like to see, and I think there is absolutely no excuse that we do not eliminate the franchise tax this year. Um, we have $113 billion in revenue. Uh, if we only spend inflation plus population growth increase in the budget like the governor wants to, that would be about $103 billion. We'd have $10 billion left over. Franchise tax is 9 Don't see why there's any excuse not to get rid of it. Representative uh, Matt Rinaldi, appreciate your time today. Thank you. I appreciate it.